okay, we're going to last a uh, little lecture on torsion. We'll do a little torsion uh, deformation example. So here we have, much like our monkey problem earlier with the gorillas, we've got multiple torques on the same shaft. This held in, we've got two bearings here. This time we have a support uh, bearing that's not allowing it to, uh, or not rather not a bearing, but just a support that's not allowing it to turn. Uh, and we're going to try to figure out what our total angle of twist is here. And I know, it's, you know, no monkeys, boring problem. <laughs> so we've got these gears uh, and we're in equilibrium uh, and we want to find the displacement of this tooth P uh, on gear A. So we know the torques uh, in between the resultant torques in all of these sections are all different. Um, and so we're going to try and find those. Um, and we're going to start by guessing which direction the angle of twist is going. So first start with your right-handed rule. And we usually start by um, pointing our thumb in the axial direction away from a support. Uh, and that'll tell you what your positive direction is. Um, and we could sort of guess that about um, what that angle of twist is. Like, as always, it's always good to guess, uh, to estimate before you start a problem. If we use the idea of superposition, you can think about, okay, how much angle of twist is this going to create? It's going to be the size of this twist multiplied by the length, right? And then I can say, well, how much is this going to create? And then I can say, how much is that going to create? And we can, we can probably uh, come up with a pretty good guess about what direction this twist is going to be. And on to the next slide. All right, so we'll use the method of sections here. And there's a little trick about signs. So let's, um, when we talk about the sign here, that we know the balancing torque, we use a method of sections, say right at bearing B. We know that that torque has to be 150 Newton meters. Um, when we talk about sign though, if we're using the right hand rule away from the support, then we have to define that internal torque um, on the outer section. So here it looks like that would be a negative internal torque, but really what we want is the way that that torque would be um, if we cut that section and looked at the end of this remaining section. So we want to define, because we're defining this positive on basically the left side of our shaft, the end of our shaft. We have to define all of them on the left side of our shaft. So our internal torque won't be this, it will be that of opposite of that that's on the left side of our remaining um, uh, shaft there. And so the internal torque is positive 150 Newton meters. Now what is the sign of the torque in CD? You can see that that, I mean, if we did some quick math, you can see that that internal torque is gonna have to be 130 to make up for the difference between the two applied torques. Um, at the end of this shaft, it looks like it's positive, right? But we want to look at the end of the other side of the section to get the sign. And then finally, see if you can figure out what um, our torque is at D in a, a section between D and E. pause if you need to. We'll go on to the next slide. 
So we find that we have an internal torque of positive 150 in this section, negative 130 in that section, and negative 170 in that section. Um, we want to find our polar moment of inertia, which we know is just a function of C. Right? So there's our radius of 0 0.007 meters. That gives us our value for the polar moment of inertia. And then we can sum the deformations in each section to find the total, um, uh, total angle of twist. So J and G are going to stay the same, and we're going to sum these guys here, right, with the torques that we discovered uh, on the previous page. The math gets a little, you know, tiresome here, but it's again useful to make sure that we look at these intermediary numbers, right? So the deformation within this part here is going to be a positive angle of twist. This is going to create a negative angle of twist, and this has a substantial negative angle of twist. And these two um, overwhelm the angle of twist that we had before. Now, a couple of things here. One, remember our guess, and we guessed we'd have a negative twist, um, and that turns out to be correct. And then notice our units. We've got Newton meters squared on both top and bottom. Uh, that means those cancel out. Um, and we have a unitless uh, number here. And it's unitless because the units are radians. Radians are a unitless unit. <laughs> Uh, because they're essentially a counting. You're counting how many radius lengths, right? So counting uh, numbers are unitless. And that's going to matter here in a second because we're trying to find how far P travels, right? So now we know the angle of twist. Uh, and that that angle of twist is clockwise as we look down the axis, so this way. And we've got one last question, which is, how far does the gear P move? So we know the radius of the gear here. Um, we know the angle of twist. Um, and if you remember what a radian is, um, then, <laughs> then you can solve uh, the change in the placement of P uh, pretty quickly. Uh, but you can also just do a little trigonometry problem. Hint, hey, a radian is how many radius lengths <laughs> along the circumference? That's what a radian is. All right.